everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Souls Code. This is Andrea and she's Lorelette Monegro. And Hello. we are here from Souls Code. So, right before we go live, I always say, <laughs> let's talk about people and weird shit. <laughs> so that's, that's why we were laughing. Because we, we want oh. to be as natural as possible. So we never stage these conversations. We no. just show up and have <laughs> real genuine conversations. So we were talking about a bunch of stuff doing some catch up before this. So um yeah. we would I would like to talk about some of the bizarre things that are going on online. So <laughs> um <laughs> that's what I want to talk about. So um I don't know if you're online, but you, you open your inbox and it's full of people. Um, so let me give you an example about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Somebody was in my inbox today and Hey, Andra, like we were old friends and he knew me forever. I just audited your website. And these are some of the things that I thought you might want to know. So why would I want to know those things? Right. Because he sells what he was just giving me information about. Right. So yeah. those are all the messages that are in my inbox. So it's at a point where I don't even want I look at my inbox and I kind of get that. Nope. Not today. Thought running through my mind. I'm not dealing with it. Right. So usually in my business, I will check that message one time um i was telling my girlfriend cj i said didn't you because we had this conversation about only checking your messages once a day your emails 15 minute periods maybe twice a day and i said haven't you ever noticed that you'll leave me a message in the morning we'll be talking and then i disappear and i'll come back six hours later and respond to that i said that's because i only allow myself so much time because it's a big time suck in your business, you know, there are certain things you have to do to stay on track, right? So, and we have other lives. And, you know, um, Laura Lett and I have spoke about reflection. We spoke about balance. And all of these things will take you out of that balance. So there's a lot of people talking about health online and they show up looking very stressed <laughs> out and you're saying, Hmm, that's not a match, right? So um, <laughs> I just responded, you know, to um, another coach. She's a coach that I that I know. Um, I don't consider myself a coach, um, more of a mentor. But um, she was talking about business and how to scale and working on yourself. And, and so I commented, the body doesn't lie. I said, a lot of people are talking about how happy and healthy they are online. But if you look at their bodies, it kind of tells you what's going on in their life, right? Um, because they, they're they not a match for everything they're telling you. So um, sometimes people don't have to open their mouth and say anything and the truth comes out, right? So <laughs> there's a lot of crazy things happening online. And I... In all, all around the world, Tara and I were just saying that we don't see these things in other countries, you know, that um, the nation as a whole is sick. So we don't want to be Debbie Downer tonight, but we are <laughs> <laughs> but we are a little concerned about the health <laughs> of what's going on out there because we are in health. And we, we just see that everybody's so distracted and so focused on everything outside of themselves. And health is really about reconnecting with self, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we, prior to getting on the show, uh, you know, all of our different conversations are so um, interesting, I think. Um, I find that, you know, we have, uh, I go on my own little tangents and go into my own little bubble of research and learning because I just like to learn different things. Um, and so I'm constantly searching for different things. I find that in the U.S., you know, part of me, <laughs> I know it sounds very conspiracy theory like, but part of me feels like we have been, you know, pharmacal pharmacologically attacked um, 
because if you look up like the top 100 prescribed medications, um, you go like, wait, what's going on? It, it tells a story in itself. Yeah. And I invite anybody to go ahead and look up the top 100 uh, prescribed medications in the U.S. And then reverse engineer that, that information to what does it treat and how do we get that which is being treated? And it will unravel a very dark place in which millions of people are in because those would be the top 100 prescribed medications. So it's not a, 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 a fictitious thing. It would be a fact um, grounded in data that is very trackable. Not me saying stuff because I feel like saying some stuff, but rather because it's there, like in the tip of the nose, and we're failing to see it. And you know, I'm 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 concerned with also the younger generation, the little children growing up, and what's happening to them as they are being targeted in such a direct way where their mind, their spirit, their bodies are all under attack at once, where we have suicide rates out of control, yeah. where we have obesity rates out, out of control, control, where diabetes. we have chronic diseases out of control, where we have childhood cancers out of control. And if you take this approach where Americans are being eaten at both ends, the elderly and the youth, and the middle is being crunched in slavery, I'm going to put it in quotes, because all they do is work, 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 work. I can't help but think that it's almost like a by design approach to eradicate Americans. It's, it's, I, I start to feel that this is a real deliberate attack. I can no longer feel that it is safe. And I can no longer ignore it because it's too much in my, in my face. And I can no longer feel good about knowing this data. I know. I know. And I just want to let you know, she's not on one of those <laughs> not your top medications about how worm has not eaten her brain. This is the truth. No, dude, they can look it up. <laughs> they can go on the Google search and look it up. I just, um, you know, when I like to understand what I have to deal with, let's say. I do this. Listen, I do this research all the time. Most of nursing is evidence-based practice. You so, have to. Uh, you know, I'm always doing that research and it's alarming to me. You know, sure. um, I, I do work in school systems. I work in the community. I, I, um, in the community, I'm seeing a lot of kids being given Ozempic for weight loss and, and, and their emotional side of how they feel about mm -hmm. that. Um, and how that's impacting them and just just a lot of stress, strange stuff you know? um, <laughs> it's a lot of strange stuff <laughs> yeah where kids are given elevator passes because they can not walk up a flight of stairs in their school um so a lot of bizarre things happening in the world and this is not to alarm you or to scare you, but, nah. you know, we are the people that put these people in office. We are the people that um, give these people the power and their power comes from us closing our eyes. So we do have to be more aware. We do have to put a better focus on our health and our well-being, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, all of it. Because it's all little by little unraveling, you know, and, and like you said, like, um, especially the work, work aspect of it. So COVID shut down everything. Let's face it, right? 
Not for me, because I had to work. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> yeah, I had to working. work. I, I, I was that frontline lady. So, but it did shut down a lot of things. People got scared. They were up against something they had never experienced before in their life. So a lot of people went online and said, well, you know, Tony Robbins said I can start a business. So now everybody's online and even they are being misled to believe that this is really easy. Just show up and you're going to make a million dollars. Look at the boat I'm riding. Look at this. Look at that. So everybody's so busy looking over there with that wants or if I only had instead of being grateful for what we do have in this moment and creating real solutions for ourselves, right? Um, I'm not saying don't start a business. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying just be mindful that everybody that's out there that's selling you so easy might not be telling the truth. Look at the body. <laughs> no, this, this is easy, you know? Um, as they're stressed running from appointment to appointment trying to get somebody else to buy a program that doesn't work, Right. So um, <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, I, I I read some of these people's things and and what they say their program does, and and you know, and I listen to some of them, and they talk about the mechanisms. And I've been in health all my life, and I, was, I say, well, good luck to those people who sign up for that because that ain't gonna work, you know. Um, but we do have to be very aware of what's going on around us we do have to start to take notice of these things yeah. like she's saying and i would advise you really to google those top 100 things that everybody in america is, is taking a large percent <laughs> of it and all the risk versus the benefits so let's let's talk a little bit about that for a minute Every medication comes with risks and benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So the benefit of giving someone Ozempic, right, to help them lose weight versus them dying of a heart disease or complications from diabetes because they couldn't lose the weight or kidney issues. So that has some um, some benefits, but they don't really necessarily tell you all the risks right a lot of these medications cause blood disclosures and all kinds of other things in your body and kidney function problems and and you know a lot of them are linked to these cancers right so mm -hmm. um so they say that if you say you know i remember seeing a commercial about a woman with roasia and i have roasia it's like um you know, uneven red spots, right? Um, but mine used to be contingent on what I was eating. <laughs> so it would show up more with certain things I eat. Now, you know, um, my diet changed, so I don't get it that much, right? But in the winter, you'll see like darker red spots. And I don't care, I'm not that vain. But the commercial was for um, something to help get rid of this Roatia and the side effects that I was listening to for this, you know, that it might cause lung collapse or, <laughs> uh, right. or lung disease or, um, you know, kidney, kidney issues or all these other things. And, and you say, is it worth a risk to get rid of a few red spots on your face to take the risk of getting cancer or some kind of other blood disclosures or dying, right? Um, so we have to be very mindful that with every single one, you know, because everybody online that is trying to lose weight is looking for a quick fix, looking for a pill, right? And we have to be mindful they come with side effects, right? So um, now they're saying that these these things actually help heart disease and help that. That's this week. In five <laughs> years, you'll hear about all these things that were reported. So these things are great to get people to come in. I remember what was that? Um, Gongoba um, carcinogen or something. It's like a coffee extract, right? So it's been around forever. <laughs> but one guy took the same medical composition of it and now remarketed it for weight loss. 
guy made millions of dollars. It's not for labels. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he just took something and decided, well, let's do and this. And made it into something else. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's not for weight loss. And a lot, there must be a lot of angry people. But um, <laughs> it's the same thing that's happening with those Zempic and all of them things. You know, people are doing all kinds of things, you know. And so, but you have to be mindful because people are giving these to children, your children. People are, um, I was talking to Laura Lett about doctors prescribing metformin for kids that are not diabetic for weight loss. Metformin is a very strong <laughs> drug and it should not be given to someone who does not have diabetes because uh -huh. it will cause hypoglycemic episodes. Uh -huh. And from a nurse's point of view, I just want to share with you, bringing someone down that's high is very easy. Bringing someone up, not so much. They can go into yeah. a coma very easy because somebody wanted them to lose weight. So yeah. um, all these side effects are things you got to be careful of when you're out there shopping in the market space. So our advice to you is to really start opening your eyes, being more of an advocate for yourself look into things, be, be sure. an investigative reporter, check into everything. And, and if, yeah, to and evaluate, I don't care, I don't you know, who, yeah, I don't care who's giving you the information. If a doctor says, okay, I'm putting you on Zocor, um, <laughs> you're, 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 because you know, you have high cholesterol, your response should be, can I try diet first? Can I, you know, come re revisit this in three months and, and try to eat things that are going to bring your cholesterol down. Like eggs, they suck the bad cholesterol out of your body. They have an enzyme in them that actually does that, right? It takes the LDL right out of your body. So um, there are lots of ways that we can approach this. But um, I think Laura Lett, when she's done making these funny faces. <laughs> no, I'm just like, you know. She's beside herself. She's just. I, I, for me, it's like, I just think about, you know, what it, what story it tells, right? If, if, if I didn't interview one single person and I see that millions of people are taking X, Y, and Z going on and that people are taking all these things for antidepressant and, and the weight loss and the whatever it tells a story so just looking at the list it tells a story you know and 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 it's a sad story and it shouldn't be like this because this is a great nation in terms of the ideals this is why so many immigrants have come to this country and i i'd like to believe that you know those of us who have come to this land and learn to love the ideals and actually work every day to to produce to fulfill you know, the, the dreams that we have and and to do service and to be sort of the best that we can be, I guess, in, in our own limited conditions that we may have. We, we want to be able to believe that all those ideals are founded in, in a good premise. And so the question is, how do we improve all of these situations and how do we evaluate moving forward where we're moving towards and what we want to create. And I think it starts with, with claiming our own individual power because obviously these things are becoming trend. And unless we're partaking in a very similar experiment of some sort, I don't understand how collectively people are being driven to have such outcomes, right, in mass. I, I, I'm trying to understand what is it? Is it the water? Is it, what is it? There's something about this that doesn't no, seem okay. The healthcare, the healthcare system has been broke for a really long time. So, uh, you know, I talk about this very openly and, and people look at me like I have 10 heads, but I was talking about this even during COVID. Um, my friends were asking me, what do you think? you know, um, are, are they going to find a cure? And I said, no, I said, I said, this is stemming from the cold. I said, it's like the cold on steroids. I said, there, there's no cure for the common cold. We haven't been able to eradicate it. So no. Um, but 
you know, I was telling them even back then, you have to start taking control of your health. But this is what I speak very openly with. Healthcare has become a big business, just like pharmaceuticals. And it used to be when I started nursing, you know, I, my ideal was Florence Nightingale, right? Um, it wasn't about making money. It was about the people. And it, it's changed dramatically. It's about, you know, um, I don't know, paper, paper click almost, right? <laughs> paper illness, right? So bad. So it's like an ATM machine that just keeps on giving. And um, during, after COVID, people had changed their outlook on health and they started saying, hey, this is no joke something like this could come around again. And I want to be prepared. I want to be in better shape. And they started moving towards health. So mm -hmm. sick care had now started moving towards health because if they can't get you this way, they want a piece of this, right? Mm -hmm. so, so then all the channels on news started talking about health and gut health and this and that. And that's all that you hear everywhere. Now they have all these unwinds and stress reductions and stuff they're trying to implement <laughs> and work and, and all these things. And those are all great things, but it's a little too little, a little too late. Because uh -huh. if we had a better foundation, an environment that was conducive to living and thriving where health and um, was accessible to literally everyone where you know, they had access to good food, good water, um, and, and good health care. We probably wouldn't be in the sad shape that we're, we're in. We're in now. You so know, we need to really start taking back our health and um, making better choices. And even if you, you know, I'm not telling everybody to go organic or go vegan, you know, I'm, that's not what I'm trying to say here. What I... Because, you know, even if you have scarcity in the food department, there are ways to make those foods more healthy. You know, um, maybe we'll do a talk on that one day. But um, you do have to take back your health. You do have to advocate for yourself. You do have to learn to say no. Is there another option? Um, I'd rather try it in more naturally or... Do I really need this pill, Doc? <laughs> Do I really need another pill? You know, um, yeah. It used it's to cocktails. drive me bananas. Um, when I I I used to work with geriatrics. I love geriatrics. That was my specialty at one point. And um, everybody on the units were getting calcium, and they were these big, big green pills. Right. And, and <laughs> half of these people were so tiny and couldn't swallow these pills. And I was like, why are they even giving it to them? You can't regrow bone. So why, why are we forcing them to take all these medications that they never took their whole life? Because we can't do that repair at 96 years old. You can't. So we we <laughs> the body has already taken its course. So you do have to take care of yourself every day. Um, we are capable of repairing what's going on in the body. So I don't want to mislead you. We can really um, create health in our own bodies. It's, it's, it's about believing in and being motivated to take those steps. So, um, so we don't want to be Debbie Downers. So no, we're, gonna leave, we're gonna leave this on a positive note, um, Google, your stuff prove <laughs> <laughs> all your stuff and and you know the the good thing is if you're on a low then you know what dust yourself off and start thinking about how could i improve this situation evaluate what what's going on you know in your life and and take a step it doesn't have to be all the steps just take one step and see what no, happens action. you know you keep taking it yeah and I, I think it's critical. It's critical. That's all I can say. So we're going to leave it on that note. I think we've given you enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love sharing real stuff. And, you know, we do have to, um, we're all in this together. You know, um, we are meant to lift each other up and build communities everywhere we go. 
and, and we do have to help each other through this because it affects all of us, right? So it does. I I want to thank you for um watching this week's session and we wish you a very very good night.